Hello guys, assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum is basically an Arabic greeting. It means peace be unto you. And I think I'll be starting every video with that because I am wishing you all peace and goodness. I am so excited to do this video. I cannot deal. Oh wait, I am so not prepared. Hello, where is my... Sorry, give me one second. Oh, I'm so professional. Un secondo. I'm back. Sorry, I got so excited to record this that I completely didn't even grab my notebook that I need to speak on this, where I took my notes. So, as some of you may know, I am a Muslim and Muslim uh, are, are people who, Muslims are people who follow the religion of Islam and the direct translation of Islam, the word in Arabic, is submission. And the direct translation of Muslim is they who like the per, a person who submits to God. So it's very uh, linked to each other. And I thought that that was important to mention because I don't think a lot of people know that. And it's a good thing to kind of keep in mind for myself and for anyone else watching this video because a lot of Islam is is that you know God asks you to do something and you do that. That is uh, one of the things that is required of us, and the main thing actually that's required of us is to listen to the will of God, believe in the will of God. So before I get into today's video, which is talking about the uh, first chapter of the Quran that I have finished reading, and kind of discuss what I learned from it, what my understanding of it is, there's a couple of things, not a couple, a few things that I want to get out of the way. First of all, first and foremost, okay, this is really important to note, and I'm so, oh, by the way, by the way, by the way, for reading the Quran and the translations, um, if there's anyone going through this with me, I would highly recommend getting the Quran that I'm reading because the uh, translations are very clear and it's very uh, easy to understand. This is the one I'm reading. Um, it's called the Clear Quran. You can find it on Amazon. This is actually a copy that my brother gave to me. And uh, I will be using this for all the translations for the duration of the series, however it long it will last. And what I love about this Quran is it begins, uh, it's, it's geared towards people who are new to Islam. It's geared towards people who are just learning. And it's perfect for me because even though I am a born Muslim, I am a practicing Muslim, I still don't know a lot about Islam. I still don't know a lot about the Quran. I've never finished the Quran in my life. And so I decided to try and take on this journey of attempting to finish the Quran and kind of creating a video log of myself reflecting on the Quran and what I've learned from the Quran. And that's what the, that's what the series is all about. So in this Quran, right in the beginning, they make a really important point that I want to share with you all which is something good to keep in mind uh, when, you know, we are talking about this. So God in the Quran is mentioned as Allah. And um, Allah is also assigned the pronoun he. Does it mean God is a man? No. God, or sorry, Allah, is a gender neutral term. So, um... Uh, um, so Allah is referred to as he, despite being gender neutral, in order excuse me, to preserve the use of a singular program, uh, pronoun. Sorry. So we believe that God is one entity, one, um, one is one, the one. And so the opposite, or, or sorry, the alternate to using a specific pronoun, a gendered pronoun, or a non-gendered pronoun is they. But they implies multiple, and God is one. So that is why, um, and and uh, the other alternate alternative is it. And it just sounds extremely disrespectful, in my opinion. And that is why the Quran, well, that's not the reason, but the, the reason the Quran uses he and not a non-gendered pronoun uh, because they implies 
multiple and we're focusing on singular. So I wanted to put that out there because I know a lot of people have issues with like, why is God a man and this and this. Um, I don't know what to tell those people because Islam doesn't say that God is a man. Uh, God is he who created man, so he cannot be what he created. Damn, that was deep. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Anyways, um, a couple other things. I would highly also recommend that anyone who's watching this video looks in the description box because I will be adding all of these little uh, translations or definitions down there that I think are just good to have a uh, constant reference to. So, for example, the... Um, translation of Islam, translation of Muslim, the translation of Surah, which is what I'll be talking about a lot. So Surah basically tr is not directly translating, but the English, I guess, version of a Surah is a chapter. And the English version of an Ayah is um, a, um, a verse, a verse of the Quran. So when I say I read three Ayahs today, that means I read three verses of the Quran. If I say this is the first surah I have completed, this is the first chapter of the Quran that I've completed. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention to you all is in the description box below. I will also be mentioning a couple of um, just important bases or basics of Islam that are just good to keep in mind if you are watching this video and um, following along the Quran with me. These are just basic uh, Islamic principles and Muslim th things that Muslims follow um, that might help give a better understanding to people who um, are reading the Quran. There will be things like the um, five pillars of Islam and the uh, six articles of faith, the Shahada, which is a statement that you have to believe in as a Muslim and basically attest to verbally and if you believe and attest to that that's basically um, you claiming to be a Muslim uh, and it goes it's basically la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam um, well I said the sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but which basically means peace be upon him. And you're basically just saying, actually, you know what? I don't want to say basically. I want to try to get the proper translation because I don't want to give you guys a wrong translation. Um, let's just do translation of the Shahada in English. And I, I know it generally, but I want to give it to you right. So um, there is no God, but God, sorry, there is no God, but God. And Muhammad is the messenger of God. Or the Muhammad is the final messenger of God. That is basically what the Shahada is. And uh, in essence, in essence, if you believe in that, you believe that there is one God and one God only. And Muhammad was the last messenger and is a messenger of God. That basically makes you a Muslim. And everything else after that is just learning and putting in time to learn about the religion. So now that I've gotten all of that out of the way and said all of that, I want to start with the big, huge fat disclaimer that I probably should have said like in the first minute of the video and I completely forgot. I do not claim to be a scholar. I do not claim to be uh, a 100% a, a uh, perfect Muslim. I do not claim to be a 100% perfect person. I am simply a student who is learning the Quran I am, yes, I'm born a Muslim. Yes, I practice the religion. Do I know everything about the religion? No, I do not. And I really want to put that out there because I do not want people taking my word as like the word. I want, if people want to do further research, go ahead and do that. I'm not a scholar. Um, I don't know everything. A lot of the things that I'll be talking about today will be like, I will try my best to make sure I use words like from my understanding or this is what I understood from those words to make it clear that I am not giving my own inter uh, like my own uh what's the what's the English version of tafsir translation of tafsir what does tafsir mean 
yeah um tafsir is the scientific explanation of the quran uh the okay yeah i'm i'm not giving my own tafsir of the quran i'm not giving my own like explanation of this is what god meant i'm going to based on the knowledge that i have the articles of faith based on the five pillars of islam and with the teachings of islam that i know of and what i have learned of the quran and know of the quran i will be giving my own like this is what i i believe this is what i'm understanding from these words so i just want to put that out there because you know i do know that there might be people watching this video who don't know anything about islam or don't know much about islam have never been exposed to a muslim and i just want everyone to know that i am not proclaiming to be anything of those that sort of like very well, well versed in the quran i mean if i was well versed in the quran would i really be you know starting fresh i don't think so or actually maybe i would i don't know anyways let us begin so the first chapter of the quran first chapter of the quran and, and like I, I love the opening um descriptions that this quran gives so right before the surah translation actually starts surah chapter they give a little blurb about the surah so this surah is chapter one surah one called al-fatiha and this is a uh, meccan chapter which is recited a total of 17 times in the five daily prayers five daily prayers is something for those of you who have been following my fixing my life series i have mentioned a few times that you know muslims are required to pray five times a day and in praying five times a day part of the prayers um this fat this surah fatiha is an integral part of the prayers your prayers are um it's difficult to complete your prayers without reciting surah fatiha i mean at the end of the day when you pray that is your relationship with god i have no right to be like if you don't know surah fatiha your prayers are not counted none of my business but the um, rules and expectations are that you are reciting surah fatiha when you are praying uh, so that is what that statement means um recited a total of 17 times in the five daily prayers cornerstone of the quran and it sums oh this is this is what i was trying to say it sums up the relation between the creator and his creation so creator god creation us um god's undisputed authority in this world and the hereafter um hereafter meaning we believe in life after death we believe that there will be a day of resurrection where we all will be judged for our deeds and we will either you know the judgment will say jannah which is heaven or jahannam which is um hell and um, depending on you know what your deeds are you might go to hell first for a bit and then go to heaven or you might go straight to heaven whatever god decides really so that's what the hereafter is and humanity's constant dependence on him for guidance and assistance it identifies god as the lord of all worlds everything from animals and plants to humans and even angels and the underlying theme is to acknowledge that he is the only god worthy of worship a simple truth which um is hard for disbelievers to grasp um, all fundamental prin principles encapsulated in this chapter are spelled out in the rest of the Quran. So what that means is, uh, from what from what that um, description is saying, it says that all fundamental principle principles, which I'm, I understood that as the five pillars of Islam. And for those of you who um, don't know the five pillars of Islam, I will be putting in in the description box. It is um, uh, believe in the oneness of Allah pray five times a day, fast during the month of Ramadan, give zakah, and, uh, give zakah, sorry, give uh, charity, and uh, visit Hajj at least once, uh, vi visit Mecca at least once in your lifetime. So those are the five pillars of Islam. I really hope I didn't mess that up. I think that's correct. I think that's correct. You know what? Should we just double check? I really don't want to be misleading people. So five pillars of Islam. Oh yeah, I'm right. Perfect. Prayer, um, profession of faith, shahada. So shahada, I told you guys about that. Shahada, salah, which is prayers, zakah, which is charity, saum, fasting, hajj, pilgrimage. Perfect. Okay. 
Okay. See, I do know some stuff. Okay. Hello. All right. So, um, this is probably one of the few times I'm actually going to recite the Sura because, um, it's a short one and it's something that like I was taught at a very young age. Now putting it out there again that I am really hoping that I pronounce everything correctly but if there are any mistakes in my pronunciations may God forgive me. Um, but um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Um, it starts off with the first verse as um, so you always begin uh, with uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of God, the most compassionate and the most merciful. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise is for God, Lord of all worlds. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, the most compassionate and the most merciful. Maliki yawm al-Din, master of the day of judgment. You alone we worship, and you alone we ask for help. Guide us along the straight path, the path of those you have blessed and not of those you are displeased with or those who are astray. So right from reading that, when I was reading it, I thought to myself, okay, this is kind of recapping a lot of the pillars of Islam, right? Right in the beginning, you start all praise of uh, all praise is due for God, God of all the Lord of all the worlds. So you're acknowledging that there is the existence of God and one God. Um, and even in verse five, it says, "You alone we worship; you alone we ask for help." You're acknowledging that there's one God, which was Shahada, first pillar of Islam. Um, second pillar of Islam is prayer. So praying five times a day and it can kind of be, it can kind of be, it can kind of, the way I was looking at it is that you can kind of see it in this, even though they're not saying like, do your five daily prayers in this surah, there's still, um, why do I keep saying they, um, the, the, the verse or sorry, the ayahs are still saying, um, you are who we worship, so you are who we pray to, um, and you are the one who we ask for help. So that's two IMO. So that is already Shahada, and that is already Salah. And for the third one, there's not no mention of fasting just yet. Um, in terms of Zakah, which is charity, there's no mention of that yet. And then Hajj, there's no mention of that either. So actually, the two main uh, the two main pillars of Islam that are mentioned in here, though, is the oneness of God, and that He is worthy of our worship, and you have to pray to Him. And um, what I found really interesting in a video that I was watching. So what I basically did is I played the verses in Arabic on my phone. Uh, there's an app called the Quran app, I think. And I just kind of listened to them over and over again. And then I kind of tried to read along. And then I went to the clear Quran. I read the translation. And then I watched a video, which I will link in the description box below, of basically a tafsir, which is a scholar um, explaining, you know, breaking down each verse and really breaking it, uh, breaking down each verse and um, giving context and, and extra excuse me explanation about it so what i thought was really interesting that i got from that video was um the way it is set up what the scholar was saying is the way that the verses seem to be set up um is that it's really cool it starts off by saying in the name of god the most compassionate and the most merciful all praise is for god and it doesn't just end there. It just says, so it's identifying. So the, the verse is identifying that this is God and all praise is due to him. So then the logical next question would be, who is him? Who is he? Right? And what the scholar was saying is that Allah begins to mention, like he begins the Quran by mentioning that all praises is due to him. And then right after 
he proceeds to explain why all praises are due to him, which I thought was really interesting because then it goes on to uh, Lord of all worlds, uh, the most compassionate, the most merciful, the master of the day, day of judgment, you alone we at. So he just mentions like boom, 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 boom. These are the um, characteristics of what I can do and who I am. And I thought that was really interesting that the scholar said that. And um, there's this, uh, I, I think what I've noticed from a lot of the verses that I have read and some of the surahs that I do know is that there's this constant uh, reminder of how gracious and how merciful God is. And I thought that that was really interesting. Like when I was re watching the video and I was doing my own thinking, and I thought it was interesting because, you know, there's a lot of people who always say things like, oh, your God sounds like he's really mean and he's filled with so much wrath and this and this and this. Um, and it's always focused on, well, uh, I guess I'm going to hell anyways. Or, you know, like there's there's always this negative talk about how religion has um, heaven and hell, but it's mainly hell that people are focused on and I get sort of turned off by um oh by the way I completely forgot to explain my what I'm wearing I just realized that and the thing is whoops uh, this is how normal this is for me to wear it doesn't even feel like oh I'm wearing something different um so okay hmm, sorry interjection time um when you are Approaching the Quran, which we believe is the word of God, and prayers, it is recommended and it is expected that we are uh, approaching it with modesty and we are approaching it in a state of cleanliness. So modesty to me is dressed in this manner, you know, covering your head, covering your arms, um, covering your body. And in a state of cleanliness, uh, you know, I am in a clean state. So I just wanted to put that out there. Okay. Um, uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Another cool thing that that video mentioned is in verse 4, Master of the Day of Judgment, um, it is mentioning that Allah is the owner of the Day of Judgment. And what the scholar was saying is that mentioning right off the bat, right? This is just the opening of the Quran. Right off the bat, the concept of the day of judgment is mentioned with which, which right off the bat provides us with a level of accountability. It introduces accountability and it makes us, or I guess the expectation is that it makes us more conscious of our deeds and, um, you know, what we do. And once you have accepted from the beginning right that this is what the scholar was saying that once you've accepted from the beginning um that you know allah is the most compassionate and the most merciful and you will be judged it is sort of like a twofold um explanation that i am very gracious and merciful and you will be judged for your actions so it's a reminder that you will be judged for your actions but I am very, you know, merciful and, and uh, compassionate. So I thought that that was really interesting. It reminds you of Allah's mercy. And then the other cool thing that I want to share with you guys that I learned is that um, the um, ayah number six, so the verse number six, guide us along the straight path. That is um, what the scholar was saying is that that is a prayer that you can recite on its own to God. And it's your way of basically asking him for guidance, you know, guide us on the straight path, guide us on the path of the good, guide us on the path of those that you are pleased with, guide us on the path that is righteous. And it's this constant, what I understood from it is that there is this constant, um, there's this acceptance of, you know, life is gonna be hard it's going to get rough and you're going to need God's well not even just in rough times you're always 
I, when I say you, I don't mean you, I just mean general you, like you're always going to need God's help to get through the day, get through your week, get through your life, get through rough patches, get through some, you know, unprecedented patches. And when you have that path, uh, sorry, that prayer constantly of guide us on the straight path, guide us on the good path, it kind of is, first of all, humbling and humility is highly stressed in um, the Quran um, and in the religion of Islam. You know, as I mentioned before, Islam and Muslim, Muslim is he who submits to the to God and or the will of God. And you cannot submit to something higher unless you have a certain level of humility. You know, pride is something that is uh, highly looked down in the religion of Islam. And it, we're encouraged to not be prideful people. We're encouraged to be very um, filled with a lot of humility. And when you, right in the beginning of the Quran, when I saw the guide us on the straight path prayer, it reminded me that, oh, that was, that's interesting because you will not be asked, uh, you will not ask to be guided on the straight path unless you have a certain level of humility, which means that once you accept that there is a higher power, there is a God, and he is the only God worthy of wor worship that gives you a certain level of humility because you're like, I'm not the all-powerful. I am not responsible for everything good that happens in my life. There is some um, there is an entity that is bigger than me that is controlling everything. Like you know, Allah is overseeing everything, and I will have to respond uh, for my deeds. I am accountable for my deeds. So I thought that was really, really interesting. It was like a, right in the beginning, it just introduces you to the principles, like very important principles of Islam which is, you know, accepting the oneness of Allah, recognizing that he's the only one worthy of worship, recognizing that he is the most compassionate and most merciful. He is the Lord of all worlds. He is the owner of the day of judgment. We are accountable for our deeds. Um, and um, he is who we ask help from. And um, what the scholar was saying in the video that I thought was so beautiful, he said that when you understand that Allah is your maker, right? So right in the beginning, um, in the verse number one, in the name of God, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Um, verse number two, all praise is for God, Lord of all worlds, the most compassionate, the most merciful master of the day of judgment. You alone we worship. You alone we ask for help. When you accept that he is the all-powerful, he is the almighty, he is who we ask for help, it gives you hum humility. Oh, okay. So there we go. I, the, the scholar also mentioned that. It gives you hum humility and brings kindness from within because you accept, this is what he said, which I thought was so beautiful. He said, you accept that you are created by God and so are all the other living beings, the plants, other people, animals. So you treat all of them with kindness and respect, or at least that's the, the, the goal. Um, and b because you accept that we all have the same creator, I will be judged for my deeds and we all will have to go back to him and answer for our deeds. So we all need to like live in harmony and kindness and goodness. So I thought that was so beautiful. That touched my heart. I don't know why, but that really touched my heart. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is that um, um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that it is um, the, the Prophet Muhammad said that this surah is the greatest surah in the Quran. And my understanding is it's the greatest because first of all, it's introducing you to some very powerful, uh, basic things that we need to understand before we progress further into the Quran. Like this is who you're dealing with. This is whose words you're reading. Are you ready for this journey? Is this something that you can believe in? Is this something that is for you? Do you understand the um greatness of god and um it kind of makes you ask these questions and it makes you also realize that oh man like this is this is just encompassing god and i thought that that was really really cool that this this surah is 
just kind of all encompassing in my opinion. So yeah, that is that concludes um, surah number one, which is surah al fatiha. Again, spoon me. Um, may God uh, forgive me if I've made any mistakes in reciting the Quran, if I've made any mistakes in uh, my understanding of the Quran or conveying my understanding of the Quran, if I've said anything incorrect. Um, I hope that God is, um, God forgives me. And there was something else that I was going to say and I completely forgot. Yes, feel free to send me a message if you would like to kind of discuss this or know more about this or, you know, you can always just comment. That's cool too. But um, I'm really happy to be doing this and I really, really cannot wait for, you know, when I am able to do the second, a another video and more and more and more. And if I think of anything else, I'll let you guys know, but I'm pretty sure I just talked about everything. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I will see you guys in the next video. I hope that this was as eye opening for you guys as it was for me. I really enjoy, I'm really enjoying reading the Quran. I'm really enjoying reading more about it and understanding more about the Quran and my religion and why I believe what I believe. And, uh, it's really cool that I'm getting to, that we have the technology that I'm able to document this and share it with myself and share it with you all as well. Um, but in, in my opinion, most importantly, have it as like a log of my journey. It'll be so amazing that, you know, God willing, I keep this up and I'm, I don't know, six months in, I've read like a good chunk of the Quran. I can look back and be like, damn, that was my first video. Like I started there and look at how much I've read now and how much more understanding I have of the Quran. I think that would be really cool. Anyways, guys, I am wishing you a wonderful, scrumptious night. Please take care of yourselves. As always, I am wishing your heart and your mind and your soul and your spirit and your pate peace and happiness and good health. Please choose to be kind to yourself and to others. Stay safe, stay scrumptious, and God willing, I will see you all in the next video or um yeah in the next video if i'm healthy and able take care of yourselves um assalamu alaikum and good night